Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's another fix it video, another video where I've bought something faulty off eBay or in this case a box of faulty things and I do my best to fix them. So in here we have a box of Xbox One controllers. So I'm going to be separating these up into different videos because otherwise it could possibly go on for days. So now I haven't actually, I've opened it up, but I haven't actually gone further than the very first controller. So they are still all in their original packaging. And uh, I got these back in June 2018, so you can see how far behind I am on certain items. I've got items in my house in some instances that I've now had them for a year where I haven't even unboxed them. The person could have sent me a brick and I wouldn't know about it. But on this one here, this was the first one I pulled out, and as you can see it says on it, 40 port or 40 charge port and it's completely missing up here. Now I can't hear it shaking around inside so it looks like these have already been taken apart and tried uh, a repair, tried on them or at least you know look to see what needs doing on them. You can see the original sticker at the back is also gone. So I am hoping that the seller just wasn't into micro soldering. My worry might be is that the pads themselves are missing in which case then it's going to be quite hard to get a new port on there. Now I have bought a new port, I bought a few of them on eBay, they're the sort of things that cost like 99p or £1.50, they don't cost a lot of money. I can't find the listing where I bought them, but I did find the original listing from here. So they were up for £70, but I did make an offer, and I offered £66, which was accepted. So £66 plus £3.95 postage brings it up to just under 70 UK pounds. There was a few pictures with it but there was very they're not there anymore but it was just a very basic list and it just says Xbox One 6 times 40 controllers job lot damage broken and if I go down to here all it says is six controllers with various faults charger ports joysticks buttons etc need fixing so i really don't know if these are going to be good or bad for example is it just this that's faulty or is it numerous other things that's faulty hopefully it's just a one thing i hope they haven't really been messed around with and like uh, you know broken other things put all into these ones to make other ones that they've sold on as good i'm hoping that these are going to be quite genuine so in other words port ripped out and that's it. I hope there's not going to be loads of different fixes on each of them. Feeling them, they feel to be okay. So I think to begin with, while we have this one out, let's try this one to start with, and then the other five can be on other videos. So it looks like they're costing roughly around £11. I didn't actually work it out. £11.66 or something each. I'll, uh, I'll put that on the video when I come to edit it. So if I can get them working for a pound or two extra then they would be worth it obviously you wouldn't really want to be spending much more than 20 pound because you can get working ones for around about that sort of price on ebay so let's get the port out let's take this apart and let's see if it is repairable or not right so first things first let's pop some batteries in see if we've got any life in here yes we have Yeah, there we go. Excellent. And let's hold down the sync button. Oh, do you know what? That's not great. Hold on now. Oh, there we go. But then it cuts off. That is slightly worrying. That is slightly worrying. Unless something's shorting up on this connector here, which is causing that. Right, okay. That's not a great start because if the connector was just a clean break off, how would this know that the connector's faulty? Because all it's doing is going from the pads to the pins. There's no you know, electronics in the connector. So that's slightly worrying. Right, okay, so to get into this, what we have to do is we have to basically rip off these side bits here. So I'm just going to try to use my nails. There we go. That feels like you're going to break it, but there, uh, you won't. And now we've got to use a Torx bit in here. Right, and this is a Torx 9, a T9. And I think they're called a security bit because there's a little hole on the inside there.
Right, so I need to take the boards out. So we're going to have to use a smaller Torx for this one. Right, I'm using a T6 for the inside. Right, I can't take that out anymore because of the rumble motors are soldered onto the board, but hopefully I won't need to unsolder them. I can just get to this here. Right, I remember finding this hard before. There's a certain technique to get this off and I can't really remember it. Right, okay, I've just kind of lifted that over the button there. Hopefully that will release this board now. Right, so let's have a look here what's going on. Now, oh, okay. That is not good. Absolutely everything. Everything's missing from it. Ah, right, okay. Let me zoom in and show you. I don't think I'm going to be able to repair this one because it will have to have loads of little traces, uh, loads of little wires put onto it. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Let me show you. Oh, let's see if I can make out what's going on here. So it should have five contacts, shouldn't it? Let's get one out and then double check that. So it looks like it's going to go this side here. Like that. Right, so hold on now. Let's have a look this side to begin with. So this is the light and this is the button here. This is the button you press. Oh okay, yeah, that's the button there. You have to the Xbox button, you have to join those two together. Right, so we have we've still got the pads on this side here for the grounds. But it also looks like we need grounds on this side as well, because got one here which looks like it would have gone to this originally this one's still here these two have gone let's see if those top two go anywhere okay so it looks like the pad would have originally gone there so look there's solder remnants and stuff here so this has been yeah see that's annoying another classic ebay isn't it so this and a repair has been attempted in fact look i can see it's burnt up here so this has been a repair has been attempted on this one because if the pad was just kind of ripped off it would still be well you would still have the probably the the micro USB in here well actually that could have actually fallen out the other way but yeah right now let's have a look is there any way we can do that so this isn't a problem I can solder that to there that's easy what's this bit at the top here let's have a look here so there's going to be no solder at the top, so I don't know why the pad, I don't know why the ground goes up to this bit here, because that's not going to be needed. So really, all, right, the ground pads are going to be fine, aren't they? Because they're all going to be shortened through the actual metal of the uh, socket itself, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. The problem is, is this one, two, three, four, five. So let's have a look here. One, two, three, four, five. So they're going to be the problem ones. But what I could try to do is I could get a fiberglass pen and I could uh, scrape it up and see if there's any way of putting little jumper wires. I just think it's going to be so unlikely. But you know what? Look, it's a challenge, isn't it? And if it was easy, it'd be a boring video. So I'll put my hands up now and say I'm definitely not confident doing this. But just because I'm not confident, I'm obviously still going to give it a go. And I, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be successful. I might be able to do it. It's just that these traces are very, very close to each other. So it's going to be hard to do jumper wires unless, for example, I could find where they go to. I mean, does this one go to this hole here, this fire? Do you see what I mean? So it doesn't mean that I have to solder three wires onto here. I could go further, further afield. That last pad is there, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five. Right, okay. I, I know straight away this is going to be quite a long video. But if that's the only problem, that will be fine. My worry is, why is it turning off? I mean, I don't want to spend half a day doing this for it just to keep going dead anyway. As far as I know, these batteries are okay. Yes, they could be dud ones, but they're new. And it was still turning off, wasn't it? Which is a little bit worrying. But I think one step at a time, it's going to be unlikely that it's got other faults. I mean, you can see why the seller would have sold this, because now this is ruined. 
But saying that, it should still work as a wireless controller, just with the batteries. So it would have still been of use to somebody, which makes me think that maybe there is another fault on it as well. Not too sure. OK, let's, uh, let's try and do this. So, to begin with, I'm going to get a fiberglass pen and I'm going to clean up all these, I'm going to clean up all around this area here to see exactly what I can do. And I'm just going to get my continuity meter, I'm going to get my uh, multimeter out with continuity and I'm just going to make sure that there is continuity between here and, for example, the remains of the trace here. There is, so I don't really need to join up them all together at all. I can just solder them from the other side because if I solder them onto here, it's going to make a good enough contact anyway on them. So I'm not too bothered about that side there. Right, let's get the fiberglass brush out. Right, it's come up nice and clean. Let's now clean it with IPA. Okay, so you can see now that. I've gone back to copper on all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my monitor set up because right now I'm looking through the viewfinder and this is going to be really fiddly. And then I'm going to try to get the... I think I'm going to try to get this on to begin with by just soldering the big pads to the other side. And then I can have a look to see if it's possible. It's going to be really hard to get in there, isn't it? Because the problem is I'm kind of blocked by this... I'm wondering if I should solder on wires beforehand onto this before I solder this onto the board. Do you know what? That will probably be the easiest. I think I'm going to solder little wires onto it, and I don't care if they loop around. You know, they can come all the way down here and then go back up. That's what I'm going to do because I'm not. Once that's in place, there. Can you see? I'm kind of. It's going to be very hard to get something onto there. I think. I don't think I've got a choice. I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to put wires onto this first of all. I'm saying that as if it's going to be easy, but remember, this is absolutely tiny. Right, OK, so I've got my monitor set up now, so I'm going to try to solder these onto here. But, yeah, I'm not... I don't feel overly confident. Let's try to trim that down a little bit. Well, look, I'll give it a go. I've got a thing they might just come straight off again. I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of solder to these actual pins. So I've got a pretty small tip on my soldering iron. That's better. So out of all of them, the only one I'm happy with is this... Do you know what? I'm sorry. Because this TV is inverted, it's so hard, I'm going to look back at the viewfinder. The only one I'm happy with is this one here. All the others are just barely hanging on. So I think what I'm going to do now is I am going to put glue gun across this because that really is, I'm pretty sure that is not going to hold. So let me do that. Uh, because remember, I still need to get them onto the traces here. I actually thought that this was going to be the easier part of it. This is, they're not actually touching the metal ground off the connector. So if I can get them on, that will actually work. Right, let's get the glue gun on it. Right, so let's just try to put a little bit on here. I'll better flatten that down pretty quick actually because otherwise it's not going to fit, is it? Right, okay, well, you never know, it might help. It might help a little bit. Right, let's put this into the board. I'll zoom out for this bit. Put it into the board now and see if we can get some solder on the other side and then we can have the horrible task of trying to get these wired up. 
Now I'm just going to make sure they're all correct. Now that I've put this glue on it, I need to make sure they are going to the correct pins. Right, OK, yeah, they're definitely all in the correct order. So let's pop it on here. OK, that's actually sat on it not too bad. Saying that I'm not going to be able to get through the traces now, I've covered them up with glue. OK, well, let's try to get some solder on this side to begin with. Right, OK, so that went on quite nicely there. So I'm going to get my multimeter now, and just to make sure that the... Uh, because the other side is soldered, in theory, now all the, the ground should be all OK on this side. So if I was to go to here, even though I haven't soldered this one here, it should still go to here. Which it does. OK. Well, I might try to put a blob of solder just on here, see if it spreads across. Right, well that ain't going to happen. Okay, so now I need to try to get these traces on, so let me zoom right in again. Right, so I'm just going to look through my eyepiece and see exactly where each of them go to. Right, if I'm not mistaken, I think that the one on this side here will end up going to this pad which goes to this capacitor so I might be able to just solder straight onto the capacitor. I'm just going to double check that now using continuity on the meter again. Okay so I'm going to go straight onto this capacitor here. Might as well start with the easy ones or easier ones, I don't think any of these are easy for me. There we go. That was all right, wasn't it? Right, now the next one will be this end one here, and it's going to go to the pad just underneath. Well, actually, it's going to be ground, isn't it? Is this one going to be ground? Yeah, because it goes to there. Let me just double check something. If I go to there and there. No, so maybe it's not ground. Hold on. Amazing how quick you forget. Let me look through the eyepiece again. Right, okay, well, from memory, there's uh, the glue's right in the way, but you see this pad here, that went to this pin here, and that pad's connected to this, so in theory I can just loop this round and connect it onto this one here. In fact, I need to solder up this one anyway, so let me solder up that one now. Yeah, so, I think with micro USB there's something about when it's on the go that uh, 
it uses the the ground on the fifth on that pin or something like that. So I think that is correct. So let's try to loop this round now. Let's get it well out of the way because the others are going to be really hard. Let's try to try to solder that onto there. Because there's no point in me struggling to get it onto that pad on the inside when it both goes when it goes to here anyway. Sorry, I got that completely off camera. There we go, that's on there, isn't it? Gonna have to buy myself another monitor because I really can't cope with this. Okay, so now I need to do each of these so. I mean, maybe I might be able to get one of them onto this tiny little dot here, this one. The other two can go down to these resistors here, can't they? Because that's where they go too. Wow, okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know if, there's, if, if it's all made a connection. Right now I do feel pretty hopeful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with IPA. Because there's a lot of flux around the place. And uh, obviously clean it gently. I've got to be careful because I think IPA can actually remove glue gun. Which I don't want. Right, okay, so that side looks nice and professional. This side looks an absolute mess. But saying that... If it's going to work, then uh, I'll be happy with it. I'm still really unsure why the controller looked like it kept sh uh, shutting down. So I think that there might be other issues with this. But still, it would be nice if we could at least get that bit sorted. Right, so I'm going to try and put it back together without breaking it. And then we'll have to see if the cable and stuff fits in the top. Right, I'll leave those bits off at the edge. Let's pop some batteries in and let's see if there's any power in it. Here we go. See, that should keep on blinking. Right, let's connect it up to. Uh, let me get my little laptop up here and I connect it up to that. Right, remember the truth, I've got my little uh, Windows 10 laptop up here. Let's plug this in and see what happens. It rumbled. Yes. Excellent, and it's connected. Look. Hold on, let's get rid of that. There you go. Can you see one controller connected? Little green tick. Okay, let me do a little bit of work on here and let's see what's. Uh, it says the device is ready, controller is set up and ready to go. So now let's take the batteries out of it and then we'll know it's getting its power and data from the USB. Right, that's that there, so let's go to... Ah, oh, right, there's loads that's not working. Right, okay. Now, how am I going to show you this? Ah, oh, you know... Ugh, 
annoyed. I, I really don't want to spend days on one controller. You know, it's fine if I've got one thing wrong, like the micro USB port was enough, was already enough. You know, that warranted a fix in itself without having to do loads of other things. So watch this now. You can see the buttons laid out here. So when I press that, it's going to be very hard to see, but that changes color, that changes color. So that's working, that's working. Uh, yeah, click in, that works. Right, so nothing on this right analog stick's working. Now the D-pad is working, that's working, that's working. Can't test that one. That works. Okay, so that does work, so otherwise that wouldn't have come up. Let's get rid of that. So the Xbox button is working. Right, right bumper doesn't work. Right trigger's not working left trigger is working so there's something wrong with the right hand side of this now what could that be and as far as the analog sticks are concerned the left analog sticks working fine you can see it moving around here but the right analog stick is constantly just up in that corner there so that's not working so this right now has got numerous things wrong with it now have i have i done something unlikely let me have another look at the board that I've done good news is it definitely is working up here via that so it's sending data and power via the USB so it looks like the USB port was successful but how far do I want to take this you know there's numerous things here that are not working which is a shame vibration works though Mm. Uh, it's really disappointing. Okay, well, I'm going to take it apart again and see if I can see anything obvious. But I was very wary because the thing is, remember I said at the beginning, just because that's ripped off, it would still work as a wireless controller. So I think what's happened is that got ripped off. They were still using it for ages. And then something's happened to this right hand side where, for example, the right analog stick and the right bumper and right trigger are not working. And that's when it was sold for, you know, scrap basically, spares or repair. Yeah. Okay, let me take it apart again. Right, so I need to see what could possibly be wrong with this side down here. Now in hindsight, what I should have done is I should have done the testing at the very beginning because there's part of me that wonders, have I shorted something up here which is causing the problem down here? The weird thing is, it's a problem on both of the boards because I mean the right bumper is on this board here and yet the right analog stick is on this board here. So unless there's a problem with for example the main chip, what would cause what would cause the issue on both boards? Uh right, I've had a look at my wiring. I'm I'm really confident that none of that has shorted. I've had a really close look at the ones I was worried about on top of the capacitors and I've actually moved the wires now. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not that. I mean the bit that I've done today is actually working but there's there's a major issue and it's not just if it was just a right analog stick I would swap it out because they do go faulty but the very fact that the right trigger's not working and also the uh, the bumper as well is really weird, especially when they're on different boards. Look, so if you have a look here, when I press the right bumper, it's not lighting up. When I press the left bumper, it is lighting up. You can see it's glowing there when I press it. Right bumper's nothing. And also, if you look at that right analog stick, can you see the green thing is right up there, and I'm not doing anything. So. Uh, I think I'm going to have to Google this one. I'll be honest with you, I don't think I don't think this is going to be fixable. I bet it's something to do with the main chip because if it was just one button, then fair enough, you would say that that switch has gone or if it was the right analog stick, you would say that the analog stick itself has gone. But because numerous things are not working, remember the right trigger is not working either, then that says to me that it's going to be possibly the chip controlling the inputs or you know recognizing the inputs let me just give everything a good squeeze make sure it's all connected well yeah right that is a shame that is a shame 
But at least I'm happy with the uh, the micro USB port anyway. I know it looks a mess, but it does appear to be working. So let me have a look on Google, and then I'll get back to this video. There might be something obvious. Somebody might say, oh, yeah, you know, right analog stick, right bumper, right trigger. It is the blah, blah chip. And then I'll be like, okay, fair enough. Uh, or there might be nothing about it at all. I don't know. I don't know until I look. So I'll get back to this in a bit. Okay, so it's after midnight, and uh, apologies for the weird camera angle. I've had to sort of uh, kind of huddled into a little space here because I've got relatives over at the moment. So uh, I had a look online, and basically I couldn't find anything obvious. It was just stuff like how to fix stick drift, you know, bumper buttons not working, triggers not working. It didn't have anything about a whole load of them not working. So basically, as far as I'm concerned, I nearly gave up on this because I thought to myself, it's going to be a problem with the board and it's going to be a problem with the, one of the main chips on the board. Now, it got a bit interesting because basically I had a spare, cut a long story short, I actually bought a big box of spares for £15, so it was an absolute bargain, which has a load of buttons, boards, analog sticks, I mean, I don't know if they work or not, but basically what I did was... I put my faulty one, you know the one that I glued up, onto this one here, which is basically one that was in the, the spares box, and it works okay, apart from, I think it was the right trigger here, but all the bumpers work, and the right analog stick and stuff works, so that's good. Now, when I put the good front, this is the good one here, you can, I put this into the one the original one that I've been trying to fix, you know, for my job lot, and basically it comes up with the exact same problems. So 100%, the work that I did earlier is okay, and it doesn't matter that these traces here around the ground pads are missing, because this is actually working, because when I put it in here, it all works apart from the uh, right trigger up here. Now, interesting, when I look closer at this board here, look what it says. Do you remember when I did it to begin with? It was only powering up and then it was turning off and powering on and turning off. Look what it says here. It says power off. So obviously this board has well and truly been looked at. And not just that, but what do you know is the difference between the two? I mean, they are different boards, so they've got different chips and stuff. But look, this has got a huge shield on here and this hasn't. So obviously somebody has taken the shield off here because you can see... It's got all the pads around the edge here for the shield to go on. So somebody who knows what they're doing has looked at this and said it's not fixable because they've gone to the bother of taking the shield off. So it's really annoying the fact that this has two or two or more major faults. I mean, the fact that the micro SD thing was missing to me is a major fault. That warrants its own video without getting involved in anything else. So I thought to myself, yes, I could swap this board out and I could probably swap the analog, uh, sorry, the trigger over and get it working. But really, what's the point? You're sort of taking out the whole of the insides. I might as well just try to repair this one here and, you know, just use this one for parts because this is never going to be a great fix up here. But I was looking closely because I thought, I wonder, remember my Walkman video that had cracks and obviously a controller can be dropped numerous times. I thought, I wonder if there's any cracks on the board. Now, I didn't find a crack, but look what I have found. Now, I haven't done any testing on it, so it might not be the issue, but it looks pretty deep, and if it is the issue, then it would make sense, because to me, there's going to be a problem with either this chip or this chip. And on this chip here, it must be a ball grid array under here. I mean, I have never looked underneath one, but if you have a look, there's loads of traces going. If you look closely, you can see that there's like loads of traces going under here. Yeah, so if you look at this thing here, there's uh, you know there's a whole load of them going under this direction. So I presume they must be going to this chip here. A uh, bit strange, I've never seen a kind of chip on a circuit board and then the circuit board soldered like a board grid array onto another circuit board. So I presume that's what's happened, but I'm not sure. But let me put it on macro and show you what I found. Right, okay, so we're zoomed in now. So this is the board that I was just talking about with the chip on it, you know, like the circuit board soldered to another circuit board. Now look, you can see all the traces going off under here, 
which I presume go off. Actually, God, it's really roughly cut, isn't it, when you look closely? Really roughly cut. But anyway, you can see it going off there. So I've just noticed that there is a little ball of solder there. One second now. Isn't there a ball of solder? Interesting. I don't know if that's from me or not. But look, as we come along here, what do we see? Come along, bang. Look at that. A massive scrape going right the way through the traces. Now, I haven't actually got my fiberglass pen and wiped it down yet to see if there's continuity, but that, to me, looks pretty deep, and it looks like it goes through that one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe not that one, but it looks like it's going through eight traces. And these all go from, this is the, basically, remember I've got problems with the right analog stick, and these contacts here, all along here, going up here, this is the right analog stick, you see here. So it's hard to see because I'm so zoomed in. Look, this is the right analog stick here. So on the other side of that is where the break is. So that kind of makes sense. If this is the chip that kind of decides what input is what, you've probably got the right bumper going down here, you've got the right analog stick going down here, and you've probably got the right trigger going down here. So what I'm going to do is let's get the fiberglass pen, let's give it all a good scrape all around here, and let's see exactly what's happening. Now, that would be a hell of a job to fix, and in reality, the reason there's not much YouTube videos on it is because it's probably not worth fixing these for the price of them. You know, it's not worth paying for somebody's time. Right, okay, I don't even need to get my multimeter, but I will, just to uh, tease myself. I know full well that that has gone straight through the traces. So let's start with this big one here. Let's just see if it's uh, if there's anything on this one. Right, so that amazingly is still making a contact. So let's go down to this one. But that's not. No. 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 And the bottom one. No. So there we go. I have to do. Let's just check this one here. I don't know if I've scraped that one back enough. Yeah. Wow, so I've got to do one, two, three, four, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Right, now it's going to be very hard because I know, again, I, I keep saying this, but you're looking at it on a big screen and thinking, ah, it's easy. It's not easy. Look at this probe. Okay, look at the uh, soldering iron with a really small tip on it. Okay, you can see how big it is compared to these. And my finger. Yeah. So that puts it into perspective now how small this is. So I think what I'm going to do is, it's going to be quite hard for me to go just across here with little bits of wire. I might be able to do it on a couple of them, but then they're going to start to solder to each other. So what I need to do is, let's see if I can trace where they go to, and if they go to, for example, you know, a, a, cap a capacitor or something like that, maybe I can just jumper it up that way. Yeah, maybe they don't. Looks like they, a lot of them go to this chip here. I wonder would it be easier for me to run from the leg of the chip? Possibly. Well, I'm going to get some IPA and clean this up. And this is definitely going to keep me busy for a while. Quel capello, non più vrai, quella chioma, non più vrai, quell'aria brillante, non più vrai, Barcolone amoroso, notte giorno di torno dorato, delle belle tremando a riposo, ma ci set vado gino d'amor, delle belle tremando a riposo.
That is it. Let's check it now for continuity. Hopefully this time it's going to work. I'm going down one each time to make sure it hasn't shorted. Unbelievable. It's done it. Fantastic. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some UV mask, put it on there and... I used a UV light from my pen. I made a mistake when I used this before. Somebody had to tell me, well a few people had to tell me that you have to use UV light to set it. Right, okay, that appears to be appears to be dry now. Let's go on to a fresh bit with no green. Yeah, there's just a few few dots left. I'm happy I'm gonna leave that at that now. Right, okay, let's uh, put this back together and see if it's gonna work or not. Right, okay, here we go. Please, this has to work after all the work I've put into it. Nobody can be that cruel. Surely, surely now, this is going to work. Right, first of all, let's see if it keeps its power. Uh oh. Oh no, 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 come on, come on. Oh, thank God for that, I left the, uh, <laughs> I was worried there, I left the metal tabs on the inside. I can deal with that. You know, if it doesn't work after all this work, I think uh, you might well see tears dripping down onto this blue soldering mat. It's quarter to three in the morning, I should be in bed. Right, okay, this time. Come on now. Yes. Yes, it's keeping its power. Alright, let's do the sink. Brilliant, it wasn't doing that before. Alright, let's get the little laptop over. Zoom out. Let's turn those main lights off so you can see it. There we go. Right. Come on now. Please, please, please do this. USB device not recognised. Okay, let's try that again. Oh no. Come on. Come on, don't do this to me. Right, the only thing I had different before is I had the batteries out. So let's take the batteries out. Come on, come on. It's a USB port on 40 now with all the messing round.
No, it's not lighting up here. Do you know what? I don't know if I've got the energy to take it apart again. Hmm, unless I try syncing it up to the Xbox with some batteries in. But you know, I don't want a I don't want a half working controller, do I? Mind you, if everything else worked on it, then I would probably take it apart again to try to uh, mess around with the USB port one more time. Maybe that middle wire's come out again. No, there's definitely an issue. Definitely an issue with that. Uh, right, okay, let's connect it up to the Xbox to see what's happening. The only problem is I won't be able to make any noise because that's in the other room. Right, okay, so that is a real, real shame. So not only is it not recognising the USB at the top, it's also not syncing up, so I can't see how the USB can affect that. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, you've seen, I fixed those traces and there was continuity across them. But what I'm thinking is now, maybe there was an issue possibly with the syncing of it originally and then when they took the shield off and stuff they might have damaged the board so maybe by me fixing that board it's I mean how can one controller have so many problems it's unbelievable honestly I'm really disappointed on this because I've spent so much time on it so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a take it apart again but I'm just going to have a quick look at it now because I'm going to continue on this I think I'll continue on this tomorrow because it's very uh, very late now yeah so uh, the only thing is originally it was connecting to my little laptop so obviously if I can get back to that level then I want to see if the buttons work because before some of the buttons were working it's just that uh, a lot of them weren't but by fixing up those traces it should have improved it not made it worse I'm gonna have a little look at this uh, USB port now see what's going on okay well that's the problem there you can see the wires are sticking out so uh, this one here there you go right let me uh, see where that's come come from got to be really careful with this glue now right so I'm just gonna wait for the soldering iron to heat up and I'm just gonna tap that one in there again see if I can uh, get it soldered Right, okay, it's recognising it now, but this is a complete mess, the USB port and everything's come off, but let's just, let's just see what's going to happen. Uh, see if I can click anything. Well, look at that. The uh, right analogue stick's now working. Uh, can't do, can't do the bumpers. I wonder if I can do these. That one. Yeah, look. It's now working. Right, so 
if I can get that USB port fixed, in theory it should work as a wired controller. Yeah, they're all uh, working, look like they're working fine. Right, okay, do you know what, I'm going to leave it there for tonight because it's really late. But I've definitely made a bit of progress there. I can't check the bumpers because they're not in. But maybe I can get this USB port back in if I'm really careful. So I'll come back to this again tomorrow. Right, okay, so I've soldered it back on. I haven't put any glue yet because I want to see if it's working. And if you look at these, these are the triggers here at the... Uh, you see the white bar is going up. So now it's being recognised as a USB controller, which is good. So I'm sure the wireless isn't going to work still. And there's the analog sticks. Uh, where's the other one here? So they appear to be working. So I'm going to put some glue across this now and close it all up. Then connect it to the Xbox and see what it does. Okay, so this time I have flooded it with glue gun. I've put it all the way around here, so hopefully it will keep intact. Right, good news, it's nearly back together apart from the side bits, and look, everything's working. So if you look at the bumpers now up here, let me zoom in. Can you see that's lighting up, that's lighting up. Trigger, trigger, and it's working as an analog as well. Right analog stick. Left analog stick. Click in, click in. D-pad. They're working, and... This will bring up the game bar. So that's connected up to the Xbox One. I'm pretty sure now it's still not going to work wirelessly. But at least it will be a wired controller. Right, OK, let's see now if it uh, syncs up at all. Let's turn it on. Right, OK, let's hold down the sync button. There we go. Hold on the sync button there. Sure it's not going to work. No, that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the USB cable and then we'll see if it will sync up that way. And then after that I'll try to update the controller and see if it will sync up that way. No, so it's not syncing up even with the USB cable. So it looks like this is only going to be usable now on a Windows 10 computer. How annoying is that? That is really weird how it works on the, uh, the Windows 10 one. Do you know what? I'm wondering if it's... Uh... Oh, here we go. Look, it has synced up. Sorry, it has synced up. It's weird. Right, okay, let's unplug it now and see if it keeps sync. No. All right, well, at least it's going to work as a wired controller. Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to update it and see if that makes a difference. Right, okay, so it says controller updated. Let's see if that's made any difference at all. All right, now let's unplug it. No, it should sync up straight away there. Let's just try it one more time. It seems to take a long time to sync as well when I press the button. No, so it's failing to sync, so it can only be used as a, a wire controller, which isn't really much good. It'd be okay as this maybe a second or third controller. Right, what I'm going to do is I don't really want to waste much more time on this, but I am going to check that back board again because I can't see anything on the front board that would cause... I don't really know where the wireless is coming from, but I can't see anything on the front board. So I'm just going to go across the back board, you know, the one with the big chips on, 
and I'm going to compare it to another controller just with my multimeter to see if I can see any maybe shorts on capacitors, something along those lines, just in case there's something else wrong that I haven't spotted. But I don't think uh, I don't think I'm going to find anything. I'm not going to film it because the video is already long enough, and then I'll just get back to this at the end just to let you know if I have found anything or not. Right, okay, unfortunately it's time to call it a day on this. I can't find out what's wrong with it. I did find out where the area was, I'll show you that in a minute, but basically I've got my working Xbox One controller here from the original Xbox One, and it's exactly this, well, nearly exactly the same controller, and I've been trying to take readings between the two, and I can't find any difference whatsoever. So basically the antenna bit is this thing here, and then it goes onto these contacts, it goes via this little resistor here, goes through this thing here, which looks like an external that you can connect an external antenna to, I don't know why that's there, and then it winds its way down to the second pin and goes into this board here. Now I've been looking for shorts between the caps, I've also been going around the chip, seeing if there's any more grounds than this one, and there isn't, so I'm not quite sure what's happening there. What is interesting though is this one has never been taken apart before, and look, there's no shield on the board, so it looks like the board, there was no shield on the board anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't fix it. Did I enjoy doing this one? An awful lot of work went into it, about six hours work, and it, again, if it was a real fault, I would have enjoyed it, but if it was just a USB port, but when you're dealing with the USB port, and then remember, I spent ages doing this as well, really happy with how that came out, and it still doesn't work. So I think what's happened here is, USB port has probably been damaged for ages, and then the controller no longer connected up wirelessly, so the person got rid of it. Then when it was a, a repair attempted on it, this thing was scraped here, and basically this board was deemed as junk, which it is junk. And I'm worried now, I'm thinking the seller might have paired that junk board with the junk other board. Yeah, it's unusual for a controller to have two complete junk boards on it, isn't it? So I'm wondering, I'm a bit wary now for these next five, because I'm thinking they might be just offloading rubbish, because both of these boards were completely unfixable, even though I did, when I say unfixable, yes I got the USB connected and yes I fixed the bottom here, but I spent hours upon hours and nobody in the real world will do that because the controller is not worth the time spent on it, so really they are just pure and utter junk. Now it'd be great if the second and third and fourth Xbox controller have real faults, for example a bit of corrosion on the battery terminal, maybe a capacitor fault or the analog stick's not working or the trigger's not working. But if every one of them are like this, then it's going to be a complete nightmare because I'm just thinking that maybe things have been put together, unfixable stuff's been put together and offloaded on, you, uh, on eBay. Maybe I'm just being cynical. Time will tell. I will obviously film the other five and uh, we'll see how we go with them. But unfortunately with this one, it's only ever going to work as a USB wired controller, which still has its uses but it's not ideal. And also, even if I did get the wireless thing working, I could never sell this controller on because I know full well if that was dropped one or two times that those USB uh, uh, micro USB wires at the top would just pop straight out again, even with all the glue on there. They're just really fragile how they're put on there. I, I really struggled with it. So yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was interesting enough. I did enjoy this and I enjoyed doing the UV mask. That's gone nice and hard now. So uh, yeah, I learned a few things along the way. But it's it's a shame to put so much work in and still not have it working at the end as a proper controller. So we'll have to, I am looking forward to actually doing the other ones to kind of see whether they are going to be real faults or whether they're all going to be a complete nightmare. For example, that faulty analog stick and a faulty bumper and a faulty trigger all on the same controller. In which case then, I know full well that these are not genuine. They've kind of been put together just to offload a load of rubbish on eBay. So we'll have to see. So if you want to see the others and more trying to fix videos, then please subscribe. If you got any enjoyment from this one, please give it a thumbs up and please again subscribe for more of these trying to fix and how to videos. Take care. See you soon. Bye now.